Welcome to another episode of Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here at the News Forum, where all voices matter. Well, our next guest has had a lot to comment on recently as the CRTC regulator and the future of tech in Canada have been in the spotlight. Peter Menzies joins us. He is the past vice chair of the CRTC and also serves as a senior fellow at the Macdonald Laurier Institute and Ottawa-based think tank. Welcome back to the show, Peter. Thanks very much. Happy to be here. I guess just to start us off, could you sort of describe the current challenges facing the CRTC? Oh, the CRTC? Well, it's got, all of a sudden, it's gone from uh, regulating a finite world, uh, uh, the relatively small world. I mean, there's hundreds of uh, licenses, but relatively small and finite world of radio and television uh, in terms of uh, over the air and cable and satellite, of course, um, to being in charge of the global internet and its infinity in terms of in terms of the the bills the powers that were given it to through bill c11 and now it's dealing with matters like uh whether or not to uh delist fox news and bill c18 it's supposed to be overseeing agreements and uh, uh, uh other things involving the newspaper industry which is adding all kinds of new complexities so they have a full plate they do indeed. Uh, do you think that, uh, uh, you know, you, I rec- uh, recall when you were uh, vice chair, I mean, uh, they must just be holding their heads in their hands saying, how do we find the resources to do all this? Well, I mean, they have had a heads up. And, they, you know, in last year's budget, I think they had an extra uh, stand to be corrected, but $4 million comes to mind that they were given to get ready for this. So uh, they they seemed very well prepared in terms of organization. And in fact, if anything, they were a little too quick out of the gate, which is not something you hear people say about the CRTC a lot, Mm. um, because there's there's problems with that too. But uh, I think they're institutionally prepared, uh, like almost to a fault where they may have already made decisions. Interesting. Um, But in terms of once they get the process underway, the volume of material they have to deal with and the decisions they, they, they're going to have to make, uh, I think it's going to be a real problem for them to try to meet the targets they've laid out, which is basically to have a framework for under C11 in place by the end of 2024. I think that would be um, very surprising if they were able to meet that. Let's talk about uh, Bill C-18, the Online News Act, for a second. You did reference that as well. And obviously, we've got a power struggle going on right now between the tech giants and the federal government. So what's your view on that? Is, is it winnable for any one side? And, and how is it going to affect uh, news in Canada? Well, in a sense, you know, the way things stand, everybody loses a bit. Um, Meta, Meta, I think, is gone from the news business. I think they've been convinced by this process that that there's really you know the as one friend said the juice isn't worth the squeeze on on the, on this one so that's going to have a devastating impact on a lot of smaller startups and innovators that uh, that have really built their business plans around around using facebook and we're not asking for bill c18 um for consumers it's probably not going to be nearly as difficult it'll be inconvenient about one in five people say they access news via Facebook, but they'll still be able to access news. They'll just have to, you know, make sure they download the app, go directly to the website, or uh, uh, you know, a, a, you know, market in their favorites on their browser, that sort of thing. So it, it's that's really sort of a detour that I think people will adjust to. But for the providers of news, I think it's absolutely devastating. Everybody, everybody in the involved loses. Right, because uh, ultimately, if there's no deal with uh, Meta or uh, with Google uh, for funds to be transferred, uh, they're they're not going to have the payday that they were expecting. No, and I think even I mean I think Google's you know willing to make some sort of deal, um, provided it knows you know it has a it knows what the what the ceiling looks like you know and. And I think provided that it gets credit for the deals it already has in place, because there's, it's not like there haven't been deals made. Um, but whether at the end of the day that really adds a significant, you know, say at the end of the day, 
you know, Google adds another hundred million bucks. Let's just throw that out there as for the sake of argument. You know, Facebook backs out, which is all, you know, it takes $18 million that it's been investing. Peter, uh, we're just going to take a brief, I uh, hate to do this, sure. but we're going to take a brief break. Uh, hold on to that thought because I think it's an important one. We'll be back after these messages. <laughs> 